What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Horsford. He's out of the Las Vegas area of Nevada. So he's going to be talking about Social Security, a Social Security reform, Social Security increase. Uh, I've been showing you guys a series of different lawmakers that are talking about Social Security reform, why it's needed, as well as why an increase for Social Security is needed. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter and Threads, you can at the TEC Show Live. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Horsford. He's going to be talking about Social Security reform and a Social Security increase. Here we go. I'd like to thank the gentleman from Connecticut, Congressman Larson, for bringing us together uh, for this important special order. And to thank you uh, for your tremendous leadership on Social Security as the ranking member of the Ways and Means Subcommittee on Social Security and for introducing the Social Security 2100 Act, which I'm proud to be an original co-sponsor of. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to speak about the urgent need for us to take action to protect and to improve one of the most important programs in our nation, Social Security. It's shameful that it's been more than 50 years since Social Security benefits have been improved. Social Security is vital to making sure our senior citizens, the disabled, and many children in Nevada and all across the country are able to keep a roof over their heads and to keep food on the table. Mr. Speaker, there are 149,700 Social Security recipients in Nevada's 4th Congressional District, which I'm honored to represent. This includes 113,832 retirees, 8,380 children, 11,279 widows and spouses, and 16,209 disabled workers. Collectively, they receive $248 million in monthly benefits in our district alone. And when beneficiaries receive their Social Security checks, what do they do? They turn around and they spend that money in our communities, helping to churn the local economic engine. Now, I know some of my colleagues on the other side will say we can't afford it. Well, the truth is we can't not afford it. By simply ensuring billionaires and millionaires pay just their fair share of FICA that everyone else who works every day does, we can absolutely afford it. With these funds, we can increase benefits for all recipients by 2%, which would be the first general increase in Social Security in over 52 years. So you tell my constituents, we can't afford it. Meanwhile, they're struggling to afford their rent and their food. Something else that I hear a lot about from my constituents is the fact that this bill, as proposed by Congressman Larson, repeals the windfall eliminations provision, the WEP, and the government p pension offset that currently penalizes many workers who have worked in the public sector, including teachers in Nevada. Mr. Speaker, I have one of the most diverse districts in the country, and I also have a significant military presence and many veterans who live in my district. Social Security's progressive benefit formula is particularly important for groups that tend to earn lower wages during their working lives, which include African Americans and Latino families. For example, in 2020, average earnings were about 41,000 for African Americans and 38,000 for Hispanics. The progressive formula means benefits replace a higher share of pre-retirement earnings for low-wage workers. People of color are less likely to work for employers who offer pensions and less likely to receive pension benefits in retirement, which weakens their security. And in 2014, 30% of African-American seniors 
19% of Latino seniors and 25% of Asian American seniors received income from pensions or retirement benefits other than Social Security. This compares to 47% of white seniors. Mr. Speaker, many of the Latino and black seniors in my district and all across the country, they rely on Social Security for all or nearly all of their income. So after decades of hard work, they deserve the benefits that they've earned and they deserve a program that keeps their benefits in line with inflation and cost of living. So by preserving and expanding benefits, Social Security 2100 would increase retirement security for people of color who have worked hard and who depend upon Social Security in their retirement. Finally, Mr. Speaker, nearly one in five adult Social Security beneficiaries are veterans, military service members who pay FICA, earning future retirement, survivor and disability benefits. Seriously injured veterans may be eligible for Social Security disability benefits. And over 8 million veterans received Social Security benefits in 2022. This is more than 5.41 million veterans who received disability compensation from the Department of the VA. The Social Security 2100 Act will extend the Social Security Trust Fund until 2066 and increase benefits for every recipient. Only we, the Congress, can make the necessary changes to protect and enhance Social Security, and we must take that action. I look forward to working with my colleagues on this side of the aisle to put people over politics and to protect Social Security. Okay, so that was Representative Horsford. Now, he said a lot. He, he went over pretty much, he broke down the Social Security 2100 Act and talked about all the different aspects, uh, the benefits that that uh, proposal could provide for people receiving Social Security. I want to I touch on one topic that he, that he talked about, and this is, there's always the argument, whenever money is going to big business, there's always the argument that if you give big business money, they will uh, provide jobs. So that money, basically, if you're giving them money, it's going to trickle down to the rest of us. But the reality is that doesn't work. We, we know that already because it's been tried and it doesn't work. Every time we give money to big business, they go out and they, they save their money. They don't spend it. But when it comes to people who are living on a fixed income, if you provide them an increase, provide them money, they're not going to just put it in their savings. A lot of the people that we're talking about are struggling. So if you provide them an increase, they're going to take that money and they're going to spend it in the community. And if they spend it in the community, that will help the economy. So not only is it going to help the person who receives the increase, but it's going to help the community around them. Also, it's going to help businesses, even big business, because if you have more money to spend, you're going to spend that money and that helps everyone. And so it's kind of the bottom up approach as opposed to just giving money to big business. Because if you already have money, let's face it, if you already have money, and we saw this when it came to stimulus checks, there are a lot of people that receive stimulus checks that really needed it and they spent that money on food and things like that. There were some people and I'll say some of us, because I was included in that, that received a stimulus check, but guess what? I didn't need it, so I put it in my savings. I didn't have to spend that money because I was already, you know, I was at the time I was working, so I was bringing in an income, and I didn't need to go out and spend that money right away. And so when you do the same thing when it comes to big business, and we're always talking about we have to, we, you know, we have to provide money for big business. Even in the pandemic, if you remember the pandemic, there was money, the PPP loans going out to big business. A lot of those loans got wiped away, as well as the airline industry. They were getting separate money just to stay afloat. Billions of dollars that the airline industry was getting. And then guess what happened? Right after we started getting, you know, coming out of the, the pandemic, we saw travel, we saw airline tickets skyrocket. Now they've come down a little bit, but they skyrocket. I mean, it, it's one of those situations where our tax dollars are going to the airline industry. They're going to big business. 
And what do they do? They hike up the prices. We're looking at inflation right now. There, there's talk of greedflation where you have big corporations that are they've raised their prices up and they've called they've said, you know, it's because of inflation. It's because of the supply chain. We had to raise our prices. But now they don't have an answer for why their prices are still high when inflation is going down and we're not really seeing problems when it comes to our supply chain. So it's one of those deals where they raise prices and they they say it was, it's because of inflation but they don't drop those prices back down. And so one of the things Representative Horsford focused on was the fact that if you give money to people who are on a fixed income, they are going to use that money. They're going to spend that money in the community and help that community. So if you are a representative and you are for an increase for Social Security, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you're helping your community by doing that. And so I think that's another, I mean, that's, that's a good way to sell it to people who are not really for an increase for people on Social Security. You give them money, they're going to spend it in their community. If they spend it in their community, it's going to help everyone in that community. So I want to know what you guys think about this. So let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.